Well, good afternoon, everyone. Oh, what a wonderful looking group of people. I am Audrey Bailey, and it is my honor, my pleasure, and my joy to once again be the Master of Ceremonies for this amazing event, and it is truly amazing. Now, without a doubt, and I say this every year, but it, because it's true, this is one of my favorite days of the year because I get to meet some exceptional people who have done some really remarkable things. But you know what, they're not that extraordinary. I mean, they're wonderful, but there are a lot of wonderful state employees doing some great things all across North Carolina because North Carolina state employees are dedicated, they're professional, they're hardworking, and they do everything they can do to make North Carolina the great state that it is. Now, there's one item of business that I need to take care of. If you have one of these or any other device that rings or buzzes, please silence it. Don't just put it on vibrate, because that vibrate tends to be a little loud, too. And we want all the attention on these wonderful people here. And not everybody going, who's that? I just turned mine off after I took a few pictures of you. So if you would do that if you haven't done so already. Now, I was talking about these state employees, and most of them, of course, are all across the state working. We have some of the best of the best right here in front of us, but let's do something, if we would. Let's just give state employees a rousing hand of applause, and let's do it so loud that they'll hear it all across the state. These are some exceptional people, but they wouldn't be here without another group of people who I wouldn't want to be a member of that group personally because they have such a hard job, and that's the Award Selection Committee. Now at this time, I want to introduce the committee, and we're go I'm going to introduce each one of them, so hold your much-deserved applause until all of them have had a chance to stand and smile and wave. All right? Elaine Barnes from the Department of Public Safety. Elaine, there she is over there. Um, Keith Dupuy, US, UNC General Administration. Keith is back there. Jimmy Goodrum with the State Employees Credit Union. There he is, the tall, handsome man in the back. Dee Jones, Department of Administration. There she is. Wait, Dee. And Lamar Sylvester with the Department of Transportation. Is Lamar here? Okay, well, let's give them all a round of applause if you will. Thank you. You did a great job this year, as usual. Now, we're extremely grateful to the State Employees Credit Union Foundation for making this wonderful ceremony possible. And at this time, I want to introduce my friend, my buddy, Mark Twisdale, with the State Employees Credit Union Foundation. Thank you, Audrey. Thank you very much. And on behalf, this is my honor just to be here, but my honor especially to represent the State Employees Credit Union and the Foundation. And congratulations to each of you for the awards that you have received. Um, one group that we like to recognize, and uh, no one has to stand, but the people behind the scenes, your spouses and your friends and your coworkers who have made this possible. The selection committee has a tough job, but they get their nominations from your coworkers who have written these uh, great nominations together and made it tough on the selection committee because they had to make these tough decisions. But your coworkers made this possible, and we need to thank them for recognizing you, especially you. So. <laughs> One of the things that is, uh, been a part of uh, amazing to me personally. I've been doing this for 11 years. I was on the selection committee for about nine years and have worked with the foundation and the Governor's Awards for Excellence for 11 years. And each year we think, oh, that was a good year. Next year is going to be tough. No, it's another great year. And you guys are just amazing. But I think the message that goes deeper than 
you being here and being recognized and having the governor here to speak on your behalf and your chancellor and your department heads to recognize you. It's a great honor, great honor. But you are unsung heroes every day, and that everyday performance comes through each year through these presentations because every year you see these nominations that recognize each of you for not only what you're doing for the state of North Carolina, but what you're doing in your communities and back home as volunteers. And you make a difference in the lives of millions of North Carolinians every day, each and every one of you. And that's amazing. We appreciate that also. With that said, just want to thank you for being here. Thank you for you allowing the State Employees Credit Union and Foundation to be a part of this awesome event. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. Now, the Awards for Excellence program was created in 1982 to honor state employees for outstanding achievements. The program is, off, is managed by the Office of State Human Resources. And at this time, State Human Resources Director Neil Alexander will introduce our very special guest. Thank you. Good afternoon. Welcome to the recipients and also to their family and friends. We're glad to, to have you with us today. Yesterday we, we had a luncheon with the recipients and I was able to uh, personally thank them uh, for the, the things that they had done. But I want to say to you again today how proud I am of what you've done and your contribution to the state and to public service. As we travel this journey of, to excellence, I'm truly honored to be on your team. I'm also proud to be on the team of Governor Pat McCrory. About two years ago, Governor McCrory asked me to serve as a State Human Resources Director. At that time, I was enjoying my retirement, uh, my church activities, uh, civic activities, and had not really uh, considered returning to work. Not only was I honored by the governor's request, but having, the pri having worked primarily in the private sector, I was intrigued of the, about the opportunity to serve our state. After talking with my wife, Shirley, and praying about this role, I accepted the governor's offer, and it's a decision that I have not regretted. Serving as a state human resources director is a rewarding job, and, and it's that because it's about helping people. It's about employees, and I am very much an employee advocate, and, and the things that we've been able to do this last two years really has had a focus on state employees. I'm also proud to work for a governor who is committed to state employees, to their safety, to their well-being, and to their personal growth. The governor has set the bar high for his team and for the employees of the state. Our journey to excellence demands collaboration, integration, and teamwork, and excellent leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the leader of Team North Carolina, our governor, Pat McCrory. Thank you all very much. Thank you all very much. I've got to first tell you about my friend uh, Neil Alexander, for those of you that maybe don't know. Neil used to be my boss back in Charlotte when I worked for Duke Power Company. He was my boss probably five, six, seven years. And I'd come back and submit reports to him, and he'd go, that's not good enough. Start over again. And then he'd come back and say, uh, we got to raise your performance standards. Or he'd come back and say, you know, you were late to work today. You need to stay a little bit longer tonight. Well, now I'm his boss, and payback is great. Uh, he was actually a great boss. And I wouldn't ask him to come here. How many times do you get a chance to call your boss and say, would you be willing to come and work for me now? And He's doing it because of public service. My secretary is here, right here. I'm very, very pleased. Frank Perry, Aldona Voss, John Scavarla, and Tony Tata also came here. Upon, and, and Bill Daltrey, are you? I don't have my glasses on, Bill. Good seeing you. Um, they all come, came here also with a calling of public service. But each of you in this audience and your families are also here 
because of a calling for public service. You could most likely be in other professions, in the private sector, making more money, maybe even having a nice piggy bank and living on the beach or in the mountains somewhere or the place of your dreams, but now you're, you're committed to public service because you want to serve and you want to help the public and you want to make a difference here in North Carolina. And for that, I just want to say thank you. And more than anything else, I want to thank your families. Each person who's in the first three rows has done something just outstanding during the past year. And this is probably the first time they've been recognized, but I guarantee you they've done many, many things during their career which they didn't get recognized for that may have been even greater than what they're being recognized here for today. But um, the people being recognized today didn't do it to get recognized. They did it because it was the right thing to do. And the one reason we're recognizing you is, is to encourage other people to use you as a role model. So they watch your actions, they walk your, watch your values, they watch your ethics, and they go, you know what, I want to be just like you. And you're right now, each one of you are being a role model for your peers, for people who are interested in state government, and for young people who are um, walking this mall and learning about the history of our state. They're looking at you and they're recognizing, you know what, there's a good career here. And even if there's not a good career here, I I'm, ha I'm glad for our state. We got some good people here. So I, I just want to say thank you very much. And I I we're going to do some major recognition here. And I apologize, I've got to go catch a flight to go meet with some governors from other states and brag about North Carolina. Because that's what I'm going to do, just brag about North Carolina, meeting with the Indiana governor and several other Texas governor and several others in, in just about two hours. And um, all, I, all they do is steal from us our good ideas. And I'm going to tell them about some of these stories of the state employees that we're recognizing today. And myself and the secretary and Neil Alexander and others are very, very proud of you, and I know your families are too. You know, just to highlight some of the um, today's recipients and what they've done. I'm going to briefly mention them and then the secretaries. We're going to have videos showing some of the incredible things that you've done, but I want to see you stand up while I'm here. So I'm going to just recognize each one of you. And first I want for customer service, Penny Evans, Phil Rowe, and Karen Brown, if y'all would stand up. This is the Correction Enterprise team and they led Correction Enterprises. They worked with the Office of State Human Resources to revamp the state employee service awards program and this is something again that's so great you're coming up ways to recognize your fellow peers throughout state government thank you all very much and we're going to have a great video of you back in a little bit thank you all very much frank congratulations joe finley stand up please joe finley is a speech and language pathologist at oberry neuromedical treatment center in goldsboro that means he's smart by the way Anytime you have a tough time pronouncing their title, that means they're smart. <laughs> but uh, he has been just a compassionate caretaker of O'Berry's residents, working with dietitians and developing innovative training exercises and uh, helping with many of the unique issues that these individuals have. And, and you've got to have patience, you've got to have brains, and you've got to have a strong heart. So thank you very much, Joe Finley, for your incredible service to the state of North Carolina. <laughs> And this past week, we recognized Veterans Day. And the Forsyth County Workforce Center on Veterans Service Unit, if they would stand up, please. Forsyth County, what a great county. I went to high school right down the street in Guilford County. But uh, we're trying to do everything we can to help veterans. And one of the great things we just did was set up NC Works Online. And that's been an incredible program, and you have really helped increase employment opportunities for veterans. In fact, I got some good news for you. We had a big job fair down in Wilmington the last two days for a new company that's planning to hire over 2,000 people in Wilmington. And the major area where they got their information was NC Works, and, and Forsyth County helped lead the way. So y'all give them a round of applause. They're connecting men and women coming home from Afghanistan and Iraq to jobs in North Carolina, and that's a fantastic thing. For efficiency and innovation, again, all of you are gonna come up here later, but I, I wanted to see you firsthand, and I got to see you last night at the mansion too. Um, Greg Cox, stand up. Uh, this is, uh, 
<laughs> you know what? This is the type of skill that we're losing in America, and we're losing in North Carolina. He's a mechanic supervisor in the Forest Services Division of Agriculture and Consumer Services. And he worked with Richmond Community uh, College through his own innovation to improvise, refurbish, and invent many pieces of equipment to help the division fight fires, save lives, and also save taxpayers thousands of dollars. You know, don't you respect someone who could fix things and make things and innovate things and invent things? This is the guy right here, and he's saving lives doing it. Thank you very much, Greg. And I thought this next one had to do with NASCAR racing. I'm not sure still. It's the Gasoline Volatility, Volatility Standards Revision Team. Stand up. How did you do in the race this past weekend in Florida? <laughs> you did all right? Um, they help lead the efforts for the EPA to apply the latest science to air quality rules and overturn outdated requirements that led to unneeded inflation of the region's gas prices. Their work has helped build a better capacity for analysis of other regulatory programs in the future. Have you noticed the gas prices have dropped tremendously in North Carolina? It's these three people who did it all right here. <laughs> Y'all give them a round of applause. Uh, you're saving a lot of money for every one of us. And James Williams, another person that's very important to us because one of our biggest challenges in state government, as Bill Daltridge and all my secretaries know, is the facilities, operations, and innovation. Frankly, a lot of our buildings are in horrible shape in state government, and we're, we're working on efforts where we're going to tear down some buildings and start the Albemarle Building. We're going to gut the Albemarle Building right here at the mall. Just gut it. Start from scratch because the thing's a total wreck because um, it's unsafe for state employees right now. I don't think it's a good building, and we're going we're gonna to gut the thing and start all over. It's not good work conditions. State employees deserve better, don't they, Bill Daltridge? than the Albemarle Building and many other buildings throughout the state. But he's a facilities operations and renovation supervisor. Back in a town where I used to be mayor, the University of North Carolina at Charlotte, and he led the way to reestablish the college renovation shop to help the university save money by performing small renovation construction progress projects on campus cheaper and faster than outside contractors. And I tell you, you got a lot of work to do because I've been on your campus and I've been on many other campuses and we got some buildings falling down right now. So your skill is needed and we need to now train the next generation to attain your skills. Thank you very much. Y'all give him a round of applause. <clears throat> For human relations, Mike Edwards, if you would stand up. He is a certification specialist with the NC Department of Insurance in the Office of State Fire Marshal, and he has worked with the family members of firefighters who have fallen, fallen in the line of duty with compassion and selfless service. These firefighters are risking their lives every time they come up to an auto accident, which is a lot of their work, and, and fighting fires. And sadly, about every year, we lose a firefighter or several throughout the state. And to have an individual with Mike's compassion and understanding uh, this is what he does, and that's a hard job, but it's a needed job. Y'all give Mike a round of applause. Thank you very much. Larry Mitchell, an office assistant at Newport Cottage on the campus of the Murdoch Development Center in Butner, where I was just there the other day. We're going to try to convert an old empty building in Butner shortly and help the veterans coming back with some mental health and other disability issues. And, uh, that was a great trip I had at Butner on the Veterans Day. And uh, he frequently volunteers outside of his administrative duties to serve the needs of the many center residents with intellectual disabilities, including volunteering to drive residents to events from the beach to the mountains and staying past his shift whenever is needed. And uh, if you ever go to Butner, the people of Butner are some of the most fascinating people and committed people. And it was one of my most enjoyable days I've had with the governor there as governor at Veterans Day. Thank you very much for your service. For outstanding state government service, you're going to be hearing these stories in more detail. Wayne Peden. Wayne, Assistant Director of the North Carolina Division of Veterans Affairs. Notice how many things apply to veterans here. He served the state for 34 years. He is known as a tireless advocate for veterans who always work to increase employment opportunities for minority veterans and increase overall support of our state's veterans and military family. Not only do we want it to be the most military-friendly state 
in the United States of America. Our goal now is to become the most veteran friendly state in the United States of America. And Wayne, you're helping us accomplish that goal. Thank you very much. <laughs> David Landrum, an administrative support associate. David, stand up. Communication Studies Department at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. We got two UNCC guys here. And has served as a mentor to a young student in Gaston County for eight years. He has now supported the now 13-year-old through learning difficulties, provided school supplies and clothes, and offered selfless service. This is mentoring is one of the great things that individuals can do. You're a great uh, role model in doing just that. Thank you very much. <laughs> Amy Scollett. Amy? Program Coordinator for the LGBTQIA Resource Office at the University of North Carolina at Wilmington, where I was just was the other day, has supported students and teachers and staff within the university, encouraging a sense of community and safety. And we're trying to also deal with addiction issues on our campuses, and I really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Amy. <laughs> Jennifer Strewberry, uh, something that's very, very important to uh, Aldona Voss, Secretary Voss, a clinic social work. She brags on y'all all the time. Supervisor at Central Regional Hospital, Geriatric Services. My mom had her doctorate degrees in geriatrics, so she was all for that. Um, and, and again, in Butner, on just a fantastic area, has helped serve the state's mentally ill since 1993. First is the Cedar Island Ferry Crew. If y'all would stand up. Boy, what a story this is. And, the video and everything else I'm sure is going to be great. These, uh, these five individuals helped pull two survivors out of a sailboat accident off of Pamlico Sound after increased winds uh, actually capsized the boat off of Ocracoke. And um, these people who were on the ferry took some very quick action and saved some lives. And I'll tell you, the, the currents, the wind, and the conditions are always very tough out there. I've sailed out there many times. They were at the right place at the right time, but then they took action. Y'all need to give them a round of applause, and thank y'all very much. <clears throat> and another group of individuals that I've seen, I think, on two different occasions, one right after an incident occurred in the Morganton area that was extremely emotional. Um, and then also at a funeral, uh, I believe at a forest, the Forest Rangers funeral. And um, this consisted of troopers from the NC State Highway Patrol, ALE agents, SBI agents, and others who assisted in the manhunt of a killer, a cold, hard killer who uh, took down a, a wonderful individual who uh, responded to a call. And um, these individuals responded very quickly and risked their own life in uh, taking down someone who uh, tragically took a life and also a life of a dog. Uh, um, they worked together. This team was able to track down a murder and a, a tough chase, and, and, they, uh, and they did their job. And that's the kind of thing that hangs with them forever, but they did their job. And I know as governor, I appreciated it. I know the families appreciate it and your fellow peers appreciate it and so did the federal government. So I'd like to recognize Team Manhunt. If y'all please stand up. It was a great team effort. Y'all stand up, please. <laughs> They've got notes for me to read. I can't read any more because uh, this is from the heart. I just want to say thank you. Um, we don't take you for granted. You don't get the recognition you deserve. You don't get the money you deserve. And I know that. You know that. But uh, we're all in here to serve a purpose, to make a difference, and to fulfill our potential and fulfill and exceed the state's potential. And the people being recognized tonight, this afternoon, are doing just that. And on behalf of the state of North Carolina and the governor's office, I just want to personally say thank you and God bless you and may God continue to bless the great state of North Carolina. Thank you very much.
Governor, thank you for being here today. And you've heard his, uh, his comments and uh, his congratulations. And you can tell his, his passion for employees and what you do on a day-in, day-out basis for public service. He also talked about being a role model. And I think we're all a role model, but y'all are really a role model for what y'all have done and what y'all have carried out. It really touches my heart to be a part of this program, to be with leaders who expire, ex inspire excellence, and to be with state employees who are passionate about their jobs, the communities, and the state of North Carolina. Joining us today to recognize our award recipients are some of our state's distinguished leaders. I will ask them to stand as I recognize them and ask you to please hold your applause until the end. Scott Bissett, he's Assistant Commissioner of the Department of Agriculture and Consumer Resources. Will Collins, Assistant Secretary, Department of Commerce. Bill Daltridge, Secretary of the Department of Administration. Mark Edwards, Assistant Commissioner, Department of Insurance. Beth Harden, Vice Chancellor for Business Affairs, University of North Carolina at Charlotte. Frank Perry, Secretary, Department of Public Safety. Dr. Adele Sigvia, probably murdered that. Interim Associate Provo, University of North Carolina at Wilmington. Uh, John Scrivala, Secretary, Department of, of Environment and Natural Resources. Tona Tata, Tata Secretary, Department of Transportation. And Aldona Voss, Secretary, Department of Health and Human Services. I want to commend all of these leaders for being here to show their appreciation and for creating the work environment that allows state employees to excel. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you, Neil. And now the main event. Now, I'm a retired state employee. I worked for the state of North Carolina for 33 years. And I can imagine what it feels like. I never had this kind of accolade. I never did anything as exciting as you. But I can only imagine what it's like for you to be sitting in those chairs right now. And we are going to have a good time celebrating you. Our award recipients have accepted difficult challenges. They've made personal sacrifices and looked for new ways to bring North Carolina to the forefront of our nation. They've demonstrated courage, creativity, and conviction. The 2014 recipients of the Governor's Awards for Excellence exemplify what is best about North Carolina, its people. Now, you've met the agency heads and representatives who are here to present your awards. But without further ado, let's meet these remarkable people up close and personal. Now, our first set of recipients, the crew of the MV Cedar Island Ferry with the Ferry Division in the Department of Transportation Commission, receives the Governor's Awards for Excellence in the category of heroism. A dramatic rescue of a Raleigh couple from the rough waters off Ocracoke Island. John and Renee Hoffman, they were out sailing last night when the winds got really strong and their boat capsized. Now a ferry, the MV Cedar Island, just happened to be nearby. And despite waves of more than four feet high and 30 knot winds, a rescue boat was able to pull them to safety. When we uh, left Ocracoke at 8 o'clock, uh, we uh, seen a sailboat coming in the channel from Pamlico South. And uh, as we were going by them, I heard a mayday on the radio, but they had very little information because they got thrown out of the boat immediately. And uh, I told the Coast Guard I thought it might be the boat that we just passed. I got looking out of the back door and the lights disappeared. The boat was gone. It had submerged. They responded perfectly when the situation arose to rescue the people. Everybody knew what job they had to do, and they did it. Got them both aboard without any complications, and I was glad we could help. 
if the ferry hadn't been there that night, the Coast Guard might not have found the, the couple in the water, so they, they might have died. The crew I have, I've had them for the last three years, and uh, I pretty much know what every one of them does. We've been together so long. And we, we are pretty much like, I guess like brothers, so to speak. Ladies and gentlemen, let's meet this life-saving team. And welcome to the stage, Stephen Goodwin, Joseph Morris, David Styron, Claude Gillikin, Randy Willis, William Smith, and Glenn Salter. <laughs> presenting, presenting the award is Transportation Secretary Tony Tata. I agree, yay! <laughs> Our second group, Karen Brown, Penny Evans, and Phil Rowe with Correction Enterprises in the Department of Public Safety receives the Governor's Award for Excellence in the category of Customer Service. Correction Enterprises is an entity of the Department of Public Safety. We have about approximately 30 locations around the state. We make all different types of um, products and use an inmate labor. We make a large variety of products from our farm products, our janitorial products. Uh, we do custom printing products, uh, metal, wood, sewing products. Uh, many of those products are products that we're using within um, the program for service awards. And they always say they're so glad to see that they're made in North Carolina. You know, our whole mission is about meaningful work experiences for inmates, teaching them a trade and um, preparing them for being released and producing quality products. So our bottom line is to reduce recidivism and that is, that is the most important thing for the state of North Carolina. We're helping these inmates be successful upon release, which is saving money for every taxpayer out there. It's a win-win for the agencies, for the taxpayers, um, and for us. It's a real honor to be recognized um, for the service that we are providing to agencies, to, um, to state employees, and also the service that we are providing to the inmates. And it is so honorable to be recognized for the work we do in Correction Enterprises. So designed this awards, all this stuff they did. Great, great. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Karen Brown, Penny Evans, and Phil Rowe. And presenting the award is Public Safety Secretary Frank Perry.
the very charming Greg Cox with the North Carolina Forest Service and the Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services receives the Governor's Award for Excellence in the category of Outstanding State Government Service. <laughs> Exciting and new, we don't do the same thing from day to day. Every day brings something new. <laughs> we are maintaining equipment. We have cash trailers. We have Smokey the Bear. Well, our main priority is fire control. You know, we run about 5,000 a year in the state of North Carolina. They had spoken to Greg about, you know, that plant making aircraft tires. And that's what we use on our tractor plow units. A member of the Forestry Service came here one day and had the idea of, of asking for the tires. So I told them what we used the, the tire for. And that initial conversation led to what eventually became the donation. About two months ago, there was 28 of these tires shipped to the North Carolina Forest Service there in Rockingham. And these tires sell probably anywhere from $750 to $1,000 a piece. The ingenuity and uh, that ingenuity that, that saved the state money. He said, you won the governor's award. And I said, my Lord, all these awards, I guess I'll just stay on here a long time, won't I? Greg loves his uniform and so proud of that patch. He made sure we all took notice of it yesterday. So let's welcome Greg Cox to the stage. <laughs> and presenting the award is Assistant Commissioner Scott Bissett. Mike Edwards, with the Office of State Fire Marshal and the Department of Insurance, receives the Governor's Award for Excellence in the category of Human Relations. Again, I've had several people say, you know, I wouldn't want your job. There's never a good time for a, a incident like this. You know, a line of duty death in a fire department is, is tragic. It's tragic for the fire department. It's tragic for the community. Our goal at that time is to take care of the family and take care of the fire department. There are special firefighter funeral arrangements that need to be made, volumes of documentation and paperwork that has to be done. They're very thankful and grateful for us to come in and take that burden off of them because uh, I've had them say, man, we're glad you're here. We're glad that you are able to do this to assist us. Mike is a champion with this program, and he has really made it what it is today. You've got to have compassion and be really a good people person. And it is a feeling of that, you know, this is somebody's livelihood. They're going to be taken care of. I've had several widows to call me and say, I just want to thank you personally because uh, you went way, way beyond. He is a friend of the fire service. And at the end of the day, Mike is one that can say, what I did made a difference in somebody's life. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome to the stage the very dapper, dignified, and dedicated Mike Edwards. And presenting the award from the Department of Insurance, Mark Edwards. Thank you. 
Okay, Joe Finley with Ovary Center in the Department of Health and Human Services receives the Governor's Award for Excellence in the category of Customer Service. Most of us, we don't even think about swallowing. It becomes is a natural thing that just happens when you put food or, or liquid in our mouth. I think eating is a, it's a big quality of life that a lot of people take for granted. Um, you know, it serves to get medicines down, your nutrition, hydration. I think it's important to maintain even just a little bit of that quality of life of putting something in your mouth when you smell the flavors and you can feel it going down. I think that's an, uh, an important quality of life for people. The Ovary Center is a specialized nursing home for people with developmental disabilities. A lot of our individuals here have uh, dysphagia and, um, and it impairs their ability to eat and drink safely. So my role is to look at people eating and chewing and see how well they can eat and chew without choking or anything like that. He hadn't been here very long and all of a sudden he began to see things that we needed to change. Being creative, thinking out of the box, coming up in different ways to try to help somebody's life and make a positive impact in, in an atypical way. He immediately went to other professionals, the dietitians, the OTPT. Where other people say, okay, well we tried that. Joe goes, no, 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 but have we tried this, this, and this? And that's, you know, what separates him from, I think everybody else here is that he truly, truly, truly has a heart for this and you can just tell the care and the love that he has for the residents. Joe is on almost like a personal mission to improve the quality of life for each person that that he touches. That's one of the most fulfilling parts to see someone take that bite again for the first time and, and get to be there for it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a true blessing to many, Joe Finley. Presenting the award is DHHS Secretary Aldona Voss. Forsyth County Workforce Center Veteran Service Unit in the Division of Workforce Solutions in the Department of Commerce receives the Governor's Award for Excellence in the category of Outstanding State Government Service. Only 1% of the population have served in the military. That's not very much in this country. And we tell the employers, do the right thing, serve those who have served by giving them a job. What's the benefit of hiring a veteran? A person recently out of the military with the skill sets out there are very remarkable, but the ones that, are, that have barriers to employment are the veterans that may have uh, some background, they also may be disabled, and so they also may be homeless. We also have individuals who are not exactly defined as being homeless by the VA or other organizations, but who are sort of couch surfing. So my role is, is largely trying to seek out those veterans that uh, so desperately need assistance. A lot of times veterans don't know which agency to go to, and we help them to kind of, kind of, kind of take them through that process of, of seeing what their needs are and then directing them. So many times we look at staff on an individual basis, and everybody has a strength, but what's great about this group is they take all those strengths and they put them together and they have had many success stories because of that. Uh, normally what I do is I'll go pay them a visit, um, just see how they're doing so they see my smiling face. It makes you feel so much better working with less fortunate veterans. Because it's a feeling that you get when you provided those services. You know, this, is, this is a calling, it isn't a job. You really couldn't just come in and qualify this and sit down in the cubicle and do what you need to do. Let me tell y'all, when I got out of the Army in 1973, we were not welcome. 
Winning this is almost like the icing on the cake. I finally have that recognition that I never thought I would get, and I finally have got it. Thank God they answered the call. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Larry Calloway, James McRavian, Steve Miller, and David Monteleone. Presenting the award from the Department of Commerce, Will Collins. This is so cool. The Gasoline Volatility Standards Revision Team, the money savers, in the Department of Environmental, Environment and Natural Resources receives the Governor's Award for Excellency in the Efficiency and Innovation category. Low volatility fuel program was mandated in the 1990 Clean Air Act amendments. So the EPA in the state of North Carolina, the best science available at the time, said let's control it by this special low volatility gasoline. And at first, in 92 to uh, 2008, the price differential was only about a penny or two a gallon, something that could be managed very easily. But once that price differential became in the 15 and 20 cent range, then people started losing business. In North Carolina, um, ozone is formed when volatile organic compounds and nitrogen oxides mix together to form ozone. We also have a lot of vegetation, particularly pine trees and oak trees, that emit copious amounts of volatile organic compounds. So what we understood after the 1990 amendments is that really to reduce ozone in North Carolina, we needed to reduce uh, nitrogen oxides. How our state is NOx limited, which means that there are other things at play than just um, the emissions from gasoline. And knowing the science of the atmospheric chemistry in North Carolina, we thought we should look at um, are we seeing any environmental benefit from this lower volatility program? If we removed or relaxed the gasoline requirement, what impact would it have in the air quality? What we concluded is that there was very little benefit to the ozone levels. We were able to uh, relax those fuel volatility standards in the summertime. The thing that I love about this project is that I can't find a, a loser. It's a win-win-win for everyone. Um, if it doesn't change the environment, then it saves everybody money, it saves them a lot of money, and with that money there are a lot of things that can be done. Our less fortunate population has to use gas and they have to go to work. It's one of their biggest expenses and so if you can reduce the amount of money that they have to spend for gas, that's going to make a big effect in their pocketbook. Working with the environment is very fulfilling. Um, I have two daughters, you know, obviously want to do something with my life that contributes back to society. So with the, the career here at the Division of Air Quality has been very fulfilling. It, it uh, makes me feel good to know that I'm doing good things for the environment um, across the state on a daily basis. Making life better with science. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Sheila Holman, Tony, Tony Pendola, and Sushma Maysmore. Presenting the award is Dean Secretary John Svarla.
David Landrum with the Communication Studies Department at the University of North Carolina in Charlotte receives the Governor's Award for Excellence in the category of Public Service. We just see David on campus and we don't realize that when you unpack him, he's doing so many other things that nobody knows about. My name is David Landrum and I actually handle budgets and grants for the Department of Communication Studies. He really enjoys helping other people and impacting other people's lives and so um, he's found that his gift is very useful in public schools and so he's been a, a counselor and a mentor to a young man. I was nominated for the Governor's Award in Excellence for my, for me mentoring with the same young man for the past eight years. I have traveled many distances to be with this young man on Fridays, making sure that I've been that constant factor in his life, which I have been the only constant factor since kindergarten in this young man's life. And now in the eighth grade, he has come to expect me every Friday, and he looks forward to me being there, and I look forward to being there with him to see what's going on and making sure that he's all right. As I have said to him, regardless of your circumstances and regardless of where you start, in the end, it's about where you finish and how you finish. And I'm there to make sure that this young man finishes ahead and strong. It's very important to be a mentor to our young kids and young adults these days because eventually they're going to be the ones taking care of us. They're going to be the next politicians, they're going to be the next leaders of the world. So I want to be able to be there for this young man or any child in the classroom that needs someone to listen to them to help them tap into their potential. We're all destined to be great and if I'm able to help these young kids or young adults realize their potential, then I've done my part. An angel on earth, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, David Landrum. And presenting the award is UNCC Vice Chancellor, Beth Harden, proud. Larry Mitchell with Murdoch Center in the Department of Health and Human Services receives the Governor's Award for Excellence in the category of Human Relations. defined by a title. Larry is truly one of the most uh, respectful people that I know. He's respectful of all mankind. Um, very caring, empathetic, and um, affectionate. And, and in, besides, he has a wonderful sense of humor. <laughs> Murdoch Center is a developmental center that serves a population with developmental disabilities. They have significant behavior and clinical needs, and it's a diverse population, so it's, it's a wide range of people, ages, cultures that are served here. The reason I love this building is Park View, the entrance way here, which is the concave, and this beautiful cherry tree here. I always say it looks like an umbrella, and of course, in the spring when it blooms, it just hangs down. You can stand under it, and then of course later on, when the wind blows, it's like a snow of petals. He has insight into identifying needs, and then he finds ways to meet them. He truly meets people wherever they are. 
and staff, they go to him because they know that he will go out of his way to assist people in doing, doing their job. I'm not just giving info to somebody, I'm receiving things from them also that's amazing to me and it enhances my life also. So I've always thought of it that way that uh, yes, we get a monetary reward for being here, but I'm getting so much more from that from the people that live here at Murdoch. Uh, I think we all like to, to do good and to help people and see their life progress and enhance. And I feel like we're making a difference here. In fact, I know we are. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the talented and compassionate Larry Mitchell. And presenting the award, once again, Secretary Voss. Wayne Peden, who recently retired from the Division of Veterans Affairs and the Department of Administration, receives the Governor's Award for Excellence in the category of Outstanding State Government Service. <laughs> In times of war, it's easy because everybody wants to support veterans during a time of war. But once the war is over, that is when our agency really has to come to the forefront and provide those assistance. It's never easy to see people suffer. It's never easy to see people in need. We can assist them with their health care. We can assist them with their uh, disability claims. We can answer a lot of questions about uh, education and pointing them in the right direction, help them with jobs. Uh, we go all the way to the point of helping them with uh, uh, their final days, whether it be a state veterans home or whether it be a final resting place. Wayne is probably one of the most compassionate people that I have ever met in my life. He cares so much about veterans. Um, you know that's his passion. That is our responsibility as an agency to have that passion and have that understanding and have that expertise to make things happen for the veteran that they so deserve. By winning this award, um, I can only say that it, it, uh, it humbles me. And it's something that uh, makes you think that your people think a little bit about you. He's left big shoes to fill. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Wayne Peden. And presenting the award is DOA Secretary Bill Dottridge. Amy Schlag with the Office of Institutional Diversity and Inclusion at the University of North Carolina at Wilmington receives the Governor's Award for Excellence in the category of Public Service. A couple of years ago, a young boy at Rutgers um, threw himself off of a bridge um, because he, he had been outed. 
there were a, a rash of suicides after that. So there was really a lot of attention being paid to the fact that the experiences of LGBT students were distinctly different um, in some ways and that that hiding and that fear had really kind of severe consequences. LGBT kids are four times more likely to attempt suicide than their heterosexual peers. Um, and as of right now, it's believed that suicide is a leading cause of death for LGBT youth, so people under the age of 24. A big part of my job is I run our LGBT QIA resource office, so lots of letters. It's an acronym for the Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender, Intersex, and Ally Community. Um, we're part of the larger diversity um, initiative of the university. We try and do outreach to kind of traditionally underrepresented students on campus and really pull them in and make sure their concerns are being heard and their needs are being met um, here at the university. It really becomes vital because one of the things that we find is when students are comfortable, when they're out, when they feel like at least one, two, three people care about them, all of those statistical things start to decrease dramatically. I nominated Amy because I know of no other colleague, um, or human for that matter, who deserves the award um, more than she does. She's really made a difference in students' lives and put a real human face on the university. I get to teach, right, on, on some points. Some points I get to be a mentor. Sometimes, as you just saw, a kid will have something really exciting coming and they want to they wanna tell you about that. Sometimes people have the worst moments of their lives and they're bringing those things to you and you get to help them do that. I think just being able to be there. We gave an award a few years ago uh, from this office to uh, our Reverend Cheryl at the Unitarian Church. And one of the things she said was she was glad to win the award, but part of the award was just for showing up. Um, and I think I like that. I think that I get to show up. Um, and, and this job gives me that opportunity to help somebody really kind of make a difference. We'll deal with this. I know it might be hard for you right now, but we'll make it better. Um, I think that is really fulfilling. And then when I see them make it better and then graduate, pretty awesome. Shining a bright light on important issues, please welcome to the stage Amy Schlag. And presenting the award from UNC Wilmington, Dr. Adele Segovia. Jennifer Shrewsbury with Central Regional Hospital in the Department of Health and Human Services receives the Governor's Award for Excellence in the category of Public Service. I'm a clinical social work supervisor on the Geriatric Services Unit at Central Regional Hospital. Um, I work with a group of seven great women who are clinical social workers taking care of patients with um, dementia and older people with severe and persistent mental illness. Jennifer has been here for about 17 years I think and she works with patients with dementia, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder. When patients come in she um, talks to their families and talks to the patient to find out about their past and their history, what brought them to the hospital and what they need to be successful here and back at home in the community. At the hospital where I'm really familiar with Jennifer does day in and day out, uh, one, her two biggest qualities I say, it's, it's really nice, she's compassionate, so she really cares for her patients, she really cares for the staff working with the patients. Uh, and she's also very smart, so she has a lot of skills and a lot of knowledge. She really is an expert in geriatric care. In September 2001, I traveled to New York City to work in Ground Zero as a disaster mental health specialist. I served in a respite center working with people working on the recovery effort in Ground Zero. Um, providing mental health support um, 
and then support also to the other volunteers. I have worked with uh, Jennifer since I was an intern here in 2005 and I have been impressed um, by her day-by-day -day commitment to her uh, patients here, her co-workers, as well as um, her community. She is always um, willing and eager to jump in whenever there's a need that she can um, address and uh, help out with. I think there's a lot of fear of people with mental illness, but I think that a lot of that comes from misunderstanding. Um, and most of my patients are wonderful people um, who are just going through a really difficult time right now. And our job is to help them get through that time and then help figure out where it is they need to go next to have a safe place to live and to get adequate treatment in the community. Ladies and gentlemen, a hero in her own right. Please welcome to the stage, Jennifer Shrewsbury. <laughs> Presenting the award once again, Secretary Voss. Team Manhunt. <laughs> what a great group of guys. They're from the Department of Public Safety and they receive the Governor's Award for Excellence in the category of Heroism. That day is a day that will always be etched in my memory as well as all my guys that were there in the woods and, and people representing different agencies, uh, it's just a day that none of us will ever forget. It was a manhunt in progress that uh, they were looking for somebody involved in uh, potential couple murders and a couple of the hit and runs. Uh, just immediately behind where we were to, to our backs, if you will, to the north and northwest, Pisgah National Forest. And uh, if this guy had gotten in there, there's no way we could get in there to set a perimeter. And he had tens of thousands of acres. And started with one dog team with Morgan and Police Department. And they, uh, they had several other people on the team. And they said, we will take one track and you wait on Jason Crisp and his dog and you guys team up with him. Uh, after several minutes, Jason arrived, him and Maros. And I knew they had gone into the woods, but we didn't hear from them for a few minutes. And, uh, then I can remember, it came over the radio that we had shots fired and an officer down. We sat there several minutes, couldn't see anything, couldn't get any response from Jason that we couldn't see him. Just a quick plan was made that we needed to do whatever we could to get to the officer. Uh, at that point, we just formed a line, kind of marched spread out so we can stay away from each other in case we did receive fire, that we wouldn't get too many people hit. And when we found Jason and at that point in time, we decided to make a decision we need to get another canine back in here and start tracking Mr. Whiston again. When it came time to enter the woods, uh, I think every one of us to a person charged into the woods the first 10 or 15 yards and then slowed down to a, to a slow, very slow walk, but uh, there was no hesitation. They encountered Mr. Whiston uh, kind of sitting halfway on the hillside overlooking the roadway and they I uh, told him to show us some hands. At that point in time, they saw he brought his gun, and it, that was it. At that point, they returned fire. You know, we're, we're receiving this award as a group, um, but it gives us a chance, if anybody asks why we're receiving this, uh, to tell them about Jason Crisp and, uh, and his family and um, just what a good guy he was. You know, old Jason was the one here taking care of your family when you were in the woods and making sure that you had a good time and, and, and enjoyed it and, and, uh, and got back out safely. So uh, I think over the years, um, when we look back on today and, and uh, the award, uh, it'll give us a chance to talk about Jason.
true heroes. Let's hear all their names as we welcome them to the stage. Doug Amos, Michael Bradshaw, Andy Klein, Mark Klein, Kevin Coggins, Carol Halliburton, Antoine Hapolt, Aaron Johnson, Russell McGee, Kyle Robinson, Joshua Shuffler, and Daniel Wakefield. And presenting the award, Secretary Frank Perry. Is Director Collier here from the SBI? No? Okay. Is he here? Are you here? Come on down. makes you think what these guys do, and they have these families who count on them to come home, and thank God they do, but thank God for them. James Williams with Facilities Management at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte receives the Governor's Award for Excellence in the category of Efficiency and Innovation. The renovation in McKnight Hall was a contractor. Uh, it was running a little off schedule. The project was, was coming close to the deadline. We came in last minute and helped them out to finish it up to get it ready for the Chancellor's Convocation. So not only did he go in and offer assistance and his expertise, but he also uh, was able to come up with some pretty inventive ideas to, to make sure the project was finished on time. Anything from building shelves, bookcases, uh, furniture, tables, just a little bit of everything goes on in here. The renovations department uh, plays a big role on our campus. You know, we are responsible for the renovations of the older buildings under budget and with probably the most efficiency that you could ask for. We started off small scale, now we do bigger jobs. We have contractors sometimes come in and give us prices. We beat contractors' prices by half by doing these jobs in-house. So every job that we do, we just save the university money. It's great for our department, it's great for the state. James was nominated because of his uh, commitment and his dedication to his job, of course. His customer focus uh, is something that James uh, prides himself on. Uh, he's very concerned for the, for the needs of the campus. One project in building services, we saved close to 40 grand on a project for them. It was a, kind of a small project. If we mess them up, we have to go back, so we like to try to do them right the first time. Money saver. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage James Williams. And presenting the award from UNC Charlotte, Chancellor Beth Harden.
ladies and gentlemen, won't you please join me in once again congratulating all of our wonderful honorees. Well, that about wraps it up, but we have one final bit of business we need to take care of, and I'd like to ask Neil Alexander to come back to the stage, one, to the podium one more time. Uh, where, is Margaret Jordan here? Margaret, come down here. Uh, Margaret is the one that has been coordinating this program for about eight years. She's getting ready to retire at the end of this month. Her last day, I think, really is Friday. Come on up. And uh, we wanted to take the opportunity to tell you how much we appreciate what you've done. she wouldn't. That's a hard work, working woman right there and I know she would appreciate it if I said something about the, the team but um, especially Peggy Beach who's her right hand woman. <laughs> and there are others, our videographer, our sound and our photographer but thank you all for all you do. Thank you for being here and now we're going to have a nice reception out in the um, for your area. Um, I hope you enjoy that. And while you're there, you're going to be entertained by some music volunteers. Chancey Cap, a, a good friend, will sing, and she will be accompanied by Nancy Coble on piano. So while you eat some fantastic food, you'll hear some wonderful music, probably a few Christmas tunes, I bet. Thank you all. Congratulations. God bless. <laughs> <laughs>